before we get started here, I just want to talk about the spy clip real quick. Now, I hardly ever use the kunai, and I was using it just to get some background footage for this video, but this is insane. First, I get three kills on a group of enemies and get away scot-free, and then a minute later I go back in again, get three more kills, and then die because the game just didn't want to give me this backstab. Now I truly see why people don't like this weapon, especially when paired with the Dead Ringer. It's not just because I'm bad, I swear it's this weapon. Anyways, that's not what you're here for, but I just need to get that mini rant off my shoulders. Let's get into the final combined weapon stats video, featuring the Spy. The Spy is an absolute menace in Team Fortress 2, just like you are to my channel if you don't subscribe, join the Discord, and leave a like on the video. Anything you can do to help this channel grow is greatly appreciated. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm rewarding you all with an hour long review of the shortstop, so if that's something you want to see, then why not subscribe? Also, stick around for a nice surprise that I bet most of you will really enjoy. If you don't know how this whole series works, we are essentially taking all the stats of the weapons in a given slot and combining them together to see what that weapon would look like. So today, we're taking a look at combining the spy's revolvers, watches, and knives. We will look into the sappers as well, but since there's only one different kind of sapper being the red tape recorder, it doesn't really work in our favor here, so we just have to ignore it. Now, let's dive in and take a look at the spy's revolvers. Before we can look into the combined stats, we need to look at the stats of the stock revolver so we have something to compare the combined stats against. The revolver is the spy's long range weapon when he just can't finish off an enemy with a backstab. This weapon does 40 damage and can be fired every 0.5 seconds. It takes 1.133 seconds for the spy to reload this weapon, and the spread recovery time is 1.25 seconds. If you do not know what that is, it's basically how much time until the weapon can be fired in a straight line again. It can also be known as a cooldown period. Thank you to all the kind comments I got on this video about what the spy's cooldown period is for his weapon. I'm a big dub baby and I make big dumb baby mistakes, and you should watch that video but just ignore that part of the video. Anyway, this weapon has 6 ammo loaded at any given time and has 24 ammo in reserve. Now that we have a base for the revolver, let's look at the combined stats of this revolver. Just in case you need a reminder or don't know, we are going to start by looking at the positives and then the negative stats, and then any extra stats this weapon may have. On the left side of the screen will show the stats and the right side will show the new revolver in action. Let's just get into it. Starting us off, this new revolver has guaranteed critical hits for headshots. There is a 40% increase in the Spy's cloak duration when this weapon is equipped. Upon hitting an enemy, this weapon adds 15% of the Spy's cloak charge back and also does an extra 20% damage while disguised. Attacks from this weapon pierce through damage resistances, and finally, this weapon earns one guaranteed critical hit for each backstab or building fully destroyed by a sapper. Moving on to the downsides now, this weapon's accuracy decreases after the initial shot and takes a second for this weapon to become accurate again. This means that you can only headshot once and then you need to wait for this cooldown period to end. This weapon has a 50% damage penalty and fires 40% slower. Finally, critical damage from a headshot is affected by how far away the spy is from the target and this weapon has no random critical hits. Overall, I really like this weapon, but before we can get into too much detail, let's apply all these new stats to the revolver so we can see what this weapon actually does now. This weapon now does 20 damage per bullet, can headshot which does 60 damage, and if you headshot it well disguised, then this weapon does 72 damage. This weapon fires every 0.7 seconds, and the weapon's reload speed, spread recovery, ammo loaded, and ammo carried is all the exact same as stock. When you shoot an enemy, you gain some of your cloak back. When you stab an enemy or sap a building, you earn crits on your weapon. Crits are affected by range, and this weapon has no random critical hits. Gun supply players would have a field day with this weapon. I mean, if we go back to pre-ambassador nerf, I think this weapon would be extremely useful. As it stands now though, I believe it is definitely useful as a way to finish off an enemy, or just start unleashing crits on your enemy if you are able to get a few stabs and saps in. Also, just messing around with it, it's been tons of fun to use. If you want to mess around with it too, now you can! As of today, the combined weapon server is now up and running. The server IP is in the description below and will also be posted in my Discord. I'll be playing there for about an hour or so after this video is up, so if you want to try these weapons out and play a game with me, I highly recommend you do, but before you do that, you should hear what the new stats of the watch and the knife are. Unfortunately, just like the sniper video, there are some weapons that the game will not let us combine together, those being the Dead Ringer and the Cloak and Dagger. You can either feign on being hit, or you can stay cloaked forever, but you cannot do both. 
I'll be using the stock watch for the footage, but just know that staying invisible forever and feigning your death will not be able to be used together, although I just I really wish they could. Let's move on and dive into the stats of the watch. When you cloak, you stay cloaked for 10 seconds. It takes 1 second to start cloaking and 2 seconds to decloak. Finally, it takes 30 seconds for the watch to fully recharge. It's pretty simple if you've ever played as a spy, but let's just move on to the combined stats of this watch. Starting with the upsides, when cloaked, if you stand still with this weapon, eh, it's not really a weapon, it's really just a tool. If you stand still with this tool, you will slowly fill your cloak meter and you can stay cloaked indefinitely. This tool has a 150% recharge rate. When activated, this tool reduces initial damage by 75% for the first 3 seconds and then slows down to 65% and drops all the way down to 20%. This tool gains a 40% increase in its cloak duration. You get a 3 second speed boost when you activate this tool, and when you feign your death, you don't shimmer when you bump into an enemy for 3 seconds. Now I just wish I could combine the Cloak and Dagger and the Dead Ringer together on the server because if you could feign your death and then just stay invisible forever, that would be awesome. Unfortunately though, we can't. So on the server, you'll be able to pick between all the stats but with the Cloak and Dagger cloak or all the stats but on the Dead Ringer. Let's look at the downsides real quick. With this tool equipped, ammo boxes and dispensers will not refill this weapon's cloak meter. When decloaking, the decloak sound of this tool is extremely loud and even if players aren't wearing headphones, they'll still probably hear you decloak. Finally, the cloak meter must be full for the weapon to be used. The extra stats this weapon has is nothing special. The spy's cloak usage varies depending on if he's moving or not. He can stay partially cloaked when the meter runs out, and upon activating the watch and taking damage, the spy drops a fake corpse. Now, that was a lot of stats to go over, so let's look and see how these stats would affect the watch. With this watch, the spy can stay cloaked for 12 seconds, the cloak and decloak speed stay the same as stock at 1 and 2 seconds respectively, and the recharge time for the watch is now 12 seconds. Also, the cloak meter does not drain while the spy is not moving. Ammo and dispensers do not refill the spy's cloak meter. There is a loud decloak sound when the spy decloaks, the cloak meter must be full to use, and the spy can stay partially cloaked when the meter runs out. Upon using the watch and getting shot at, several things happen. Damage is reduced by 75%, the spy gets a 3 second speed boost, you don't shimmer when bumping into an enemy, the cloak meter is dropped by 50%, and the spy drops a fake corpse. Now if we are imagining these two options, feigning your death and staying invisible forever, I think this tool would be busted beyond belief. I mean, feigning your death is already busted, but now that you can stay invisible forever, you can feign your death and then run across the entirety of the map without anyone even knowing you're there. And while you're on the other side of the map, you could decloak and stab them with a super cool combined knife. Speaking of that, why not talk about the knife now? The stock knife is pretty simple to understand. When attacking an enemy, if you attack them from the front, you do 40 damage. If you attack an enemy from the back though, you do 600% of the target's maximum health, which instantly kills any player in the game unless it's a sniper with the Razorback, which... Well, let's not get started on that dumpster fire of a discussion. Finally, the weapon is able to attack every 0.8 seconds. Now, we all know the knife is a dangerous tool in the right hands. I mean, just look up TF2 Spy Main on YouTube and you've got thousands upon thousands of hours of people showing off their skills with the weapon, and some even teaching you on how to grow your skill level. But how dangerous would this knife be if it was combined with all the other knives? Let's just take a look. For the upsides, when you backstab an enemy, you will instantly disguise yourself as whoever you just backstabbed. Your victim does not make any sounds when backstabbed. When the spy backstabs an enemy, the kill is not shown in the kill feed at all. On a successful backstab, the spy can absorb up to 300% of the spy's maximum health. Again, when killing an enemy, the spy gains 30% of his cloak meter back, and the spy gains a 3 second speed boost. Finally, if hit by fire particles, the spy is fireproof for 1 second and immune to afterburn for the next 10 seconds. The downsides this weapon has is that it has a 33% increase in its cloak drain rate. You need to have a full cloak meter if you want to disguise, and this weapon uses all of your cloak if you want to disguise. The spy loses 80 of his health, bringing it all the way down to 45 health. When you backstab an enemy, their body turns into a giant ice statue, and if any fire particles touch the spy with this weapon out, the weapon will melt and it takes 15 seconds to recharge. This weapon will also regenerate if the spy picks up any ammo packs. 
Now if you notice, the Your Eternal Reward, Sexy, and Golden Frying Pan are listed under Turns Victim to Ice. This is because when combining all the weapon stats together in the mod, the Spice Girl stat was the one that was chosen to appear. So while yes, the code for their bodies disappearing and turning to gold is in the weapon, it's just overpowered by the Turns Victims to Ice stat, and those two just don't show. Now, as a moderate spy player, I would say this weapon is at least somewhat good. Wanting to make sure I was not misrepresenting the facts though, I reached out to a couple of spy mains on YouTube and asked them for what their opinion was of the weapon. Both of them basically said that if you manage to get a backstab with this weapon, none of the downsides even come close to outweighing the upsides, which I would 100% agree with. The speed and overheal alone make this weapon great, but if an enemy does not realize you just disguised as their frozen buddy, then they're as good as dead. Also getting cloak back after a kill is just the icing on top of this giant frozen knife cake. Thanks to both John 2 Hill 2 and CyberWizard for getting back to me so quickly on the subject. They both make amazing content on the platform and I highly recommend you check them out. I love both of these channels and definitely recommend them to any new and upcoming spy mains. It's crazy how far we've come since the first combined weapons video. It was that scout video that really jump started this channel, and I hope to finish this series strong with this video. I definitely disagree with some of the choices I've made with some of these rankings, but I will make a video at some point re-ranking these all. Now, for the last time, let's get into the rankings of the Spies combined weapons. Starting us off, the combined revolver is being placed in the A tier. The revolver is used as more of a support tool for the spy instead of his main source of damage, so rewarding the spy for doing his job with crits by backstabbing enemies and sapping buildings is incredibly useful. The increase in cloak duration also helps so much with helping the spy sneak around and keeping him out of sight of enemy players. While yes, this weapon does fire slightly slower and also has its damage output cut in half, if you're good at hitting your shots or just have a lots of crits stored up, you're actually doing more damage than you would with stock. Maybe when playing with this more, I realize this weapon isn't actually that good, but for now, it's staying in the A tier. Although I'm ranking the combined watch like it could do both Dead Ringer and Cloak and Dagger could do, I would still put these weapons in this same tier if they were separated, and that's the A tier. The watch is already an amazing tool for the spy to use, but also having an 150% increase in the cloak's charge rate and a 40% increase in the cloak's duration just adds to my love for it even further. The downsides I could see affecting players the most would be that you're unable to refill the cloak from ammo packs, and decloaking is a lot louder than it otherwise is. But an increase in charge rate and an increase in cloak duration would have players cloak meter fully charged in no time. This weapon pairs perfectly with both the Dead Ringers and Cloak and Dagger's respective niches. Whichever one you end up choosing, I think that you will be able to fully enjoy the tool for what it is. Also, I think if you pick the combined watch that has neither the Dead Ringer or the Cloak and Dagger's respective niches, you'll really enjoy that tool as well. Finally, the combined knife. This is an instant S tier for me. I don't care what you say about losing 80 hit points or the weapon melting in fire, the speed boost, instant disguising, and overheal greatly increase the amount of time that the spy will stay alive for. I mean, he turns to a literal speed demon when you backstab an enemy, and he can kill you quicker than you can kill him. It's literally everything you want in a weapon for the spy. If you have any objections, then come square up with me in the combined weapon server. I'll be waiting for you there. Thank you all for watching the video. It's bittersweet to put this series to a close, honestly. On one hand, it helped my channel grow and I'd want to make more of these videos on the subject, but there are no other classes and I don't want to run this series into the ground by trying to make so many different sub-variants of the series, like combining all the weapons of a certain color or something stupid like that. I'll definitely make a video at some point correcting mistakes I've made over the past 18 months, but I think that's about it. I might remake some of the older videos too to bring them up to the quality of the newer videos, but I'm not entirely too sure. If that's something you want to see, just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like, subscribe, join my discord, and if you're free, then come join us on the server. I'm eager to see you all there. Finally, people have started making fan art of me, and I just want to add a section here at the end showing off what they've made. I'm honestly stunned that people want to make fan art of some small channel like mine, but I'm forever grateful. You guys are amazing artists, and I envy your skills. If you ever want to make fan art and want your shown at the end of the video, then there's a spot on my Discord server to submit it. I hope you all have a great day, and remember, that's just a theory. A Lennox Team Forges 2 theory. Thanks for watching.